how to create a live filter layer in Affinity Photo. Got an image there. First thing to do, go to a layer menu and new live filter layer and go down to colors and procedural texture. I could use any of the other filters as well. I'm going to show you how to create a grayscale filter. You can see the panel says live procedural texture. You can also use it via the filters menu. There's a whole range of different presets, some that come with Affinity Photo, some that I've created already. To create an entry there, just click plus to add equation. And this is for the red channel. And I'm going to copy the red channel into the green channel and into the blue channel to create the grayscale effect. But I'm going to add a bit more variety to it. So it's not just grayscale, create a whole range of different color effects using this approach. So bracket R plus G plus B, all in uppercase, bracket, and then divided by three. I'm going to put a variable in front of it. I'm going to call it A1. A1 times R. I'm going to have B1 times G. Now I could go with A or B, but I just like to keep it really unique. So A1, B1, etc. Instead of just going with C, D and those sort of things. So C1 times B. Now at this point, there's not much grayscale. Let's modify it slightly because it's modifying the red channel. But I'm going to copy it. But first, I'm just going to click, click the plus twice to add some more entries for it for the equation. And I'm going to paste the same equation in. So it's A1 times, etc. So I could keep it as that. Now, it doesn't seem to work. Obviously, at the moment, you can see it's just there's no grayscale at all. That's for R, G, and B, the channels. But what you need to do is create the, the variables, the custom inputs. And I want them to be reals. So click the R three times. And that will create three variables. They're all A1, B1, and C1. Well, initially, it will create it as A, B, and C. But you can rename them. And you could rename them to something more useful than that. So just go for R, yeah, A, and then put A1. And then B1. Now I'm going to extend it a little bit later. So I'm going to make a B2 and A2, etc. as well. Just make certain opacity set, set 100%. Sometimes it just ends up, for some weird reason, you end up making it like 10%. And now, of course, what happens? You've got zero, zero, zero in the custom inputs. Well, obviously, I don't want those. So I'm just going to put them to one, which now puts it brings it back to a grayscale. But you can vary it. So it's not just one. You can make it two. You make it 3.2, 5.4, etc., etc. So you can run through a whole different load of settings. I'm going to extend that even further because I don't want A1, B1, C1. Well, I want those, but I want to add A2, A, B2, etc. as well. So I'm going to, before I create a preset, I'm just going to quickly add some additional custom inputs. Quickly create those. So it's A1, B2, etc. Let's do it quite quickly. A3, B3, and C3, and give them values. So you don't have to keep them at naught, keep them two or three. Now what I want to do is go and put in these equations instead of for red channel and green channel. For the green channel, I want the twos. And for the blue channel, I want the threes. So they're now all set. All those settings are set. So you can quickly run through that and create those yourself. And then obviously come back to the video and continue later if you wish. And again, you can vary all the settings for those things. So you can create all kinds of really wonderful color effects simply by now changing and I've, 
I'm using three and two, etc. But you can put one point two, etc. And you can save that preset as well. So if you want to, you can just go up to the top, top right, and there's an option for saving that preset. Just there. Create preset. Now put it into the channel adjustments and give it a name. So I'm going to call it Gray One and create. So you've got that preset. You can now use that in the live filter layer at any time. And also you can use it in the filter menu at any time. You can also create presets for the custom inputs as well. So you can create a variety of those. But the one great thing, well, one of the useful things with this live filter is it's live. That's a good thing. You can change it at any point and you can move it around and all those sorts of things. But you can also use blending modes. So a whole range of different colors suddenly become available via that as well. So you can change the blending modes. That's not stored in the preset creation. So you can just change the presets, the blend mode at any point, as well as obviously all the settings as well. And you can change your opacity. And then you can close it down. And then when you go over to the layers, just there, the layers panel, what you can see connected to that background is that procedural texture. And that's associated only with that layer. Of course, there's only one layer. I've got other videos where I show better use for multiple layers and how you can combine filters with each of those layers. And you can just double click on that procedural texture in the layers panel, simply to bring up the panel again, and then just change the settings again. Just run through the blend modes again, as well as change all the custom inputs. But you can also, and I haven't done it, the I've got the divide by three. Well, I can divide by four. I can divide by five. I can also change that. So I could put it to maybe call it a D, D1, D2, and D3, and maybe make those custom inputs as well. It's up to you. You can extend it. And, of course, you don't have to stop there. You can actually make additional entries on that line, maybe add multiple entries of A1 plus B1 plus C1, and then have variables for those as well. And again, like I say, you can change your opacity, blending modes, and all those sort of things. So all kinds of amazing color effects can be created just from that very simple equation. And what you can do, you can always go to the layer menu, new live filter layer and procedural texture, and then just go down the presets. And there you can see the preset there, gray. And just add it again. And you can see now in the layers panel, you've got the entry applied again. Now this time it's above the, the background. No, it doesn't make it, it doesn't make any difference. It's basically doing exactly the same thing as there's only one layer. But you can obviously change all the values there for the custom inputs. So again, combination of maybe three, four, five different live filter layers, you can create some really weird colourful combinations. And of course you can combine them with all the other live filter layers, which are all live all the time. So you can edit them at any point. And you can close it and you can see you've got the thing. and you can move it you move them around so you can just drag it down into the so both of them now just moving them around will change the end result now you can put them all on top of each other and so and so and you can just just drag them and move them sometimes it doesn't work particularly well sometimes it just suddenly stops it won't do it and you or it'll just slip back because you've just let go too quickly you can move them around and create all kinds of things. And again, double click to bring up the panel and then change the settings if you wish to again create different colored designs. From, like, very garish green design there, or that design there. Overlay, close it down. So that's the live filter layer showing you how to create wonderful color and grayscale effects using that live filter layer. The live filter layers are live. You can change them at any point. So they're really, really useful. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Critter, Clip Studio Paint, and many others all the time. 
Also, please add a comment or two. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.